A secessionist versus unionist struggle is underway today in Somalia. Armed forces of Somaliland, which is a secessionist state, have attacked the Somali unionist community in Lasanad, killing between 30 and 40 civilians. Unionist protesters in that city have taken up arms and issued a statement saying that they consider themselves citizens of Somalia. Pacifica's Anne Garrison has this report on the role the U.S. is playing in the background to this struggle. The U.S. has been tacitly encouraging Somaliland secession because it wants a naval base in Somaliland's Berbera port. It already has a naval base, Camp Le Monnier, in nearby Djibouti, uh, but it appears to have outgrown it. An aircraft carrier alone is a floating city of more than 5,000 U.S. service persons, so it needs a wide berth. The 2023 National Defense Authorization Act includes a plan for direct military collaboration between the U.S. and the breakaway state government, bypassing the federal government and angering Somali nationalists. I spoke to Somali-American software engineer and writer Jamal Abdullahi, who published an essay titled United States Pursuit of Imperial Military Base in Northern Somalia Fuels Brutal War in Black Gender Report. Jamal, what should Americans understand about the unionist secessionist struggle in Somalia? Well, thank you, Anne. Well, there's stark differences between the two groups. The unionists wanted a Somali republic. They wanted a uh, Somalia that works for vast majority of Somalis. You know, they do not want a utopia. They're not looking for a utopia country, but they are looking for a country that works for most people. And after all, Somalia did work for you know quite a years. The secessionists, on the other hand, they wanted to split Somalia based on 19th century colonial borders. So there is a quite a bit of difference and there's stark difference between those two groups. Neither the UN nor any of its 193 member nations have recognized Somaliland as an independent nation, although its politicians have been seeking recognition for 30 years. However, various American politicians, including Idaho Senator James Risch, and Secretary of Transportation and former presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg have advocated for recognizing it. What seems to be motivating them? Both Senators James Switch, as well as a Secretary Buttigieg, who was a presidential candidate at one time, share a set of donors who have supported these politicians at one time. And these are linked to the American military industrial complex and there, so there is an economic interest into this. In the event that the United States goes ahead with the construction of this base, as well as the maintenance of it, the likes of Halliburton and General Dynamics are expected to be beneficiaries of these. And oftentimes they fund certain politicians. And these two politicians that you mentioned, Senator James Rich of Idaho, as well as a, a Secretary Buttigieg, who's, by the way, in some circles, has spoken as a, uh, a potential presidential candidate as well. They share a set of donors. Donors from the military industrial complex. That's correct. The current president, Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, issued a statement that the parties to the conflict should talk to one another instead of insisting on the unity of the Somali Republic. What do you think of his leadership or lack thereof on this? Well, so I think that statement sort of, you know, speaks to this third camp. Uh, remember, we just d d define the unionist as well as the secessionist. Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, I think, is trying to find a third ground, third rail into this. And what he's doing there, I think, is he's verbalizing this idea of confederationist. Confederationist meaning that he's open to accepting a, a pseudo country in the north or this region called Somaliland. So I think in a nutshell, that's what he's trying to get at. Well, reports are that Somaliland armed forces have attacked civilians in Lasanad who have started taking up arms to defend themselves. Why hasn't he sent troops in to defend the people of Lasanad? Uh, good question. So I think there are two reasons for this. The primary one is he may not have any troops to send under his control right now, because I, I think he has grossly mismanaged the Somali national uh, forces. A lot of them have been either killed or wounded in, in a uh, poorly uh, mismanaged 
fight against Al Shabaab. So he may not have a uh, any more troops to spare at this point. The other reason I think is that he's, he's no nationalist. He just does not believe that uh, the uh, citizens of Las Anot, uh, which is part of the uh, Sol region, are under his jurisdiction. I think those are the two primary reasons that he's not either speaking forcefully to defend these civilians or, to your point, a consider sending troops. I think those are the two reasons that he's not doing either of them. Okay, Jamal, thanks for speaking to Pacifica. Oh, well, thank you. Happy to do it. For Pacifica, I'm Ann Garrison.